So again, my name is Doug Williamson. I'm joined today by Sujin Lee, uh, and we're going to be your hosts. And as Zachary mentioned, we are open data ambassadors. So think of us as reference librarians for open data. We're here to guide you through the holdings and to answer any questions you might have. I work full time for a city agency and part of my responsibilities there are being an open data coordinator where I facilitate the use of my agency's data uh, on the open data platform. So before we get started though, um, I'm gonna let uh, Stu Jin uh, introduce mm -hmm. himself and then yeah. um, we'll go a little further. Thank you, Doug. Uh, good morning, everyone. I, yeah, it's really great to see you this morning and thank you for joining. And um, my name is Sujin Lee. I'm yeah also a volunteer in the Open Data Ambassador program, and I'm also like yeah full time city agency worker. I'm working currently working in the mayor's office for economic opportunity. So like yeah, my office is for yeah focusing on like anti poverty program, and also I'm the Open Data Coordinator for my agency. So I'm really great to see you today. And then I passed the up to get started. So the material for this training was co-created by the New York City's Office of Data Analytics, which falls now under the recently created Office of Technology and Innovation, uh, and was also created with the support of the technology organization Beta NYC. Uh, much of the ideology around government transparency uh, stems from a place called the Sunlight Foundation. Uh, and the Sunlight Foundation uses this metaphor of a window. And the thinking goes that by opening up a window into the walls of a government institution, the sunlight shines through, uh, which you know, obviously sheds light onto the activities um, and acts as a disinfectant to potential corruption within the organization. So this promise of open data um, goes further. Um, and it represents information that allows people to take action on their own behalf. So really it's about you, right? It's about the general public using the, the city's open data offerings to help uh, your mission. So before we get started, I just wanna talk a little bit about the word open. Uh, in the context of open data, I think a lot of people think of it as an adjective, right? So where we're, um, we're talking unrestricted or accessible, but I like to think of it more as a verb. Maybe that's because I work for the city um, and here, uh, the idea is that we're opening up the data to you, right? So this uh, gives you access, right? It allows us, it allows you to become enlightened by using our. Um, for a lot of people, like I said, this is really a philosophy, right? That certain data should be freely available to everyone in the general public. Uh, and as a result, this will promote transparency. It will uh, provide accountability within the government and value creation in some cases. So. Open data is all about accessibility, right? It's about making this data accessible to the public. Uh, it's considered a 21st century phenomenon. When we think about, you know, when we hear the term data, we think about computing and analytics and things like that. Um, but there uh, is a long history to it. And we're gonna talk about that briefly here. Um, so the roots of open data, especially in New York City, go back to good government efforts that traced back to the late 1800s and the progressive era of government reform. In New York City, these progressive reforms took the form of a new publication to share city, city notices and updates. And this is the city record. So the city record, uh, there's a screenshot of it here, uh, and uh, it's still available in print and online. So this is really useful information because it provides uh, information about what's going on within the city itself. So it has, it's, acts as a central repository for information about city solicitations, public notices, purchases, hiring, and so on. Um, so this is a really valuable resource for anybody that plans on uh, either you know, working with the city or doing business with the city, or just general um, things that go on within the city's operations. If we jump ahead to the 1960s, uh, there's something called freedom of information uh, legislation. Some of you might know this as FOIA or FOIL, um, and this legislation gets passed at the federal level. Uh, it also gets passed at the state level in some cases, um, but basically what FOIL legislation did was it made government information available upon request. Uh, and the, the key part of that is upon request. So if you know what you're looking for, you can ask for it, 
And if the information exists and it can be shared, it will be provided to you, um, which is great, right? That's really a, a remarkable feat, especially at the, the federal level. Uh, so a lot of times, um, you know, journalists leverage this, right? If they're doing a news story or something like that, but it could be done by anybody, which, uh, you know, I'm not sure everybody's aware of. With, the, with FOIL, most government information is available if someone asks for it, right? Um, that's the key thing. So the um, FOIL, in the Freedom of Information Act is based on a request for information, right? But the problem with that is that most people don't know what they don't know, right? So they have no idea what they're looking for or should be asking for. So this became a real sort of bottleneck for people. Uh, in New York City, uh, we create, the city created something called the public data directory. Um, and this directory uh, would help guide people as they make their requests. So this is broken down by city agency uh, and it lists all the data that the city agency maintains. So while that's helpful, um, it's still not quite complete, right? Uh, it's a big step in the right direction. Um, and the data directory also facilitates that, but there's still one fundamental issue, right? The problem is that people need to request the data, right? They need to specifically articulate a request in writing. Um, but in 2012, that issue would be finally be addressed with the introduction of Local Law 11 uh, in 2012. So that's the city's first open data legislation. In short, it's a law that requires the city itself to publish the data proactively, as opposed to responding to specific requests for public information on an ad hoc basis, right? So to be clear, this is not a policy or recommendation. This is a law, right? A law that guarantees the public will have access to this information in perpetuity, regardless of administration, right? So no longer are the, uh, the government agencies reacting, right? They're not responding to these FOIL requests. Now they're proactively publishing this data so anybody can look at it, right? And again, this is a law, so it uh, spans any administration, right? So any new administration comes in, they have to adhere to this law. So what does open data look like? Well, it looks like our city. So this is an image of Union Square, uh, it's 14th Street and Broadway. And basically, lots of this streetscape that we can see is uh, articulated in open data. So things like um, street segments and uh, recycling bins, restaurant inspections, um, complaints about uh, broken streetlights or potholes, um, all of that information uh, is present in the open data platform today. So let's talk a little bit about what open data is and what open data is not. Open data is not pre-aggregated data. It's not summarized data. It's not PDFs. Open data is structured incident level data that is machine readable. Um, so that machine readable um, is a, a very key phrase. So the image that we're looking at is a scanned map of uh, the original plan for Central Park, um, but it's not, um, and it is machine readable, but there's no data behind this image, right? So that's really what we're talking about, that data behind these things, where we're organizing it in rows and columns, like a spreadsheet you might work with in Excel, for example, right? So that's what we mean by machine readable. Another criteria for open data is that it cannot be private or confidential. Right, so the city is very sensitive to uh, privacy concerns um, and any private data um, or um, anything that's protected by HIPAA, for example, would not be considered open data. Um, so the data sets are closely reviewed for personal information. Uh, sometimes you hear the term PII, personally identifiable information. That's all reviewed um, by the agencies and the open data team before it gets posted publicly. Uh, I know in my organization, for example, we do an extensive review with our uh, legal team uh, and they provide feedback on what can and can't be released. Um, there are some instances where there's an important reason for members of the public to have access to private information uh, and that data can be made public. So for example, there's a data set of city employee names and their salaries. 
and that is considered open data and that is released to the public. As of 2022, the New York City open data contains more than 3,000 data sets spanning billions of rows of data. It's managed collaboratively by a staff from the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, which are collectively known as the Open Data Team. The wealth of information is only possible thanks to a network of about 100 open data coordinators spread throughout city government, which, uh, as we mentioned, myself and Sujin are both open data coordinators. Every city agency, office, or commission, including elected officials, like the Staten Island Borough President's Office, has an open data coordinator. These open data coordinators are well-versed in their agency's data and are responsible for working with the open data team to identify, structure, document, publish, update, and share their data sets. So again, um, open data is all about making data accessible to the public. So let's take a look at the city's open data website. Um, you can access it at nyc.gov slash open data. The link is down there on the bottom. Uh, and this is the landing page for the NYC, the NYC open data platform. So from this landing page, you can easily search for a topic you're interested in. Every data set has been tagged with keywords that identify are identified by the respective agencies. So here on this slide, we've highlighted the, the search bar and you, know, you can just type in a keyword, whatever it is you're interested in. You, know, you could type in, for example, parking violations, uh, and that would search the repository for any data sets related to parking violations. Um, you can also search by geographies, for example, you know, type Staten Island, and that would show any uh, relevant data to Staten. There's also an option at the top, the data link, um, which will bring you to an overview of all the more than 3,000 data sets on the page. So uh, by clicking on that link, um, we're brought to the data page. Uh, and this on this page, we can see that data is grouped a number of ways by category um, and by agency, for example, right? But also we have functionality by most popular or newest. So there's a number of ways to, to look at the data or to search the data whole. If you know specifically what agency you're interested in, maybe it's um, the Department of Sanitation, or you know, if you're interested in um, COVID, for example, the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, right? All of that can be um, found here. Also by category, right? These are more broader categories, business, city government, education, public safety, and so on. Popular data sets is fun just to see what other people are looking at. Um, this, you know, um, Certain ones you might expect, like 311 are typically there, but other ones show up as well, things related to crime, for example. Another popular one is baby names. So lots of uh, different data there, um, and people are using it in a variety. And then if you're interested to see what's new, um, just click on the new data sets, and that will sort of sort them by um, when they were posted. So let's do a quick search. We can um, search for 311, for example. And if we type 311 in our search bar, um, this will um, bring us to information about 311. For those of you that are not familiar with 311, um, but if you're from New York City, hopefully you are familiar with it. Um, 311 is our system that's in place for non emergency issues, right? So if there's an emergency, you call 911. Um, if there's a non emergency, um, you can call 311, right? So this is anything um, from you know, uh, you know, broken streetlights to potholes to um, noise complaints and things like that, right? Again, non-emergencies. It's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and it's available in over 175 languages um, for over 3,600 government services. It's accessible by the phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and a mobile app. So if we type 311 in that search bar, the first uh, return result that we get um, is 311 service requests from 2010 to present. Uh, you can see that our search for 311 was resulted in uh, 43 results being returned. Um, but this first one is the one we're gonna focus on. These are actually the service requests 
or the incidents um, in 311. When you click on that link uh, or the data set title on the search results page, you'll be taken to a page like this. Um, this page uh, is called a primer page, and it basically gives you an overview of every data. Uh, as you can see, it gives a lot of information, not just the description of the data, which is obviously useful, but it also shows uh, the date the data was updated, the frequency of updates, how much the data has been viewed and download, right? Notice on uh, the 311 data set, um, there's 27.5 million rows, right? Uh, it goes back to 2010, uh, and there's 41 columns. We can see here from this primer page uh, that it was last updated at, when this presentation was created on January 11th of this year. Um, we can see that it gets updated every day, right? The frequency is update, uh, updated daily. And uh, this specific data set has over 442,000 views and almost 400,000 downloads, right? So this clearly is a very popular data set. There's also um, something called a data dictionary associated with each data set. And this is really an important um, piece of information. Um, this is meant to teach you what's in the data, right? Uh, some of you may have heard the term metadata. This is the metadata for the data set, right? This uh, Excel spreadsheet, this attachment here uh, contains metadata. And metadata, for those of you who've never heard that term, metadata is just a fancy word for data about the data. So the metadata, um, in this case, uh, if we click on this link, will take us to this uh, Excel file. And here we can see um, each of the column names, uh, a description for each of the columns, and then things like expected values for each of those columns, right? So this tells us a lot more information about what we can expect to see inside this data set once we start to view it. Um, it's particularly helpful if you plan on doing um, additional things like filters and visualizations, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So now that we have some context about the data based on the data dictionary, let's look at the data itself. In order to do that, um, we click on the view data button at the top of the page, uh, and that's uh, highlighted here in red. So the first thing that we see once we go to um, view the data, this 311 data set has 41 different columns and 27 million rows, as we said before, right? So this is a, a pretty voluminous data set. Um, and it would be virtually impossible to expect people to, you know, scroll through 27 million rows, right? So um, the platform that we use for open data has the ability to filter. Um, so on the screen towards the right, we can see this filter pane, which allows us to drill down in a little more detail. And for example, we can do um, a specific street condition, or I'm sorry, a specific complaint type. In this, in this case, it's street conditions. Um, sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So for example, here, now we're going to set up a filter for a specific community board. Um, in the 311 data set, there's a column for community board. Um, and in this example, we're filtering we're filtering for community board one in Queens. And this could be just as easily changed to um, any of your Staten Island community boards, for example. So now you'll notice that we're um, filtering it down quite a bit and we're, we've gone from over 27 million rows to 546,245 rows for uh, 311 complaints in community board one in Queens. So that's, that made our life a lot easier, right? We're getting uh, much more focused in our search. We can also do additional filtering. Um, we could also filter, for example, by date and agency. So we've expanded our filters in this case to include only records that occurred this year, right? Starting uh, January 1st of this year. And then we're only looking at sanitation complaints, DSNY complaints, um, for this year. And now we can see that we've uh, gone down considerably. Our resulting rows are now 289. Uh, so that means there are 289 
complaints, 311 complaints this year in Community Board 1 in Queens to the Department of Sanitation. Once we're done, we can uh, export this data if we're interested in using it for additional analysis. Um, and there's an export button on the um, window there that's highlighted in red. And we can export it into a number of common formats. Um, CSV stands for comma separated values. Uh, there's also uh, Excel, comma separated values for Excel, which is a good form if you're using uh, Microsoft Excel for your analysis. And then this downloads the data locally to our computer so we can use it um, for something else, maybe for a analysis or a presentation or something like that. So we're not just limited to filtering and open data. Um, what if you wanted to create a chart or a graph of the data? Um, if you download the data, you can do that in Excel or Google Sheets, for example. Um, but you can also use the city's open data site to create some basic visualizations as well. So rather than go through that process of downloading it, you can do it directly um, in the open data site without ever having to leave. it. So next to the view data button, there's a visualize button. Uh, and that brings us to um, some visualization tools. Um, now, I just want to give you a, a note for those of you more uh, advanced users. Um, if you're familiar with commercial tools like Tableau or Power BI, um, this um, functionality here isn't as advanced as that, but it does the basic uh, charts that you might, might need for any reports that you're creating. So here's uh, an example of that. Um, we can go to the visualization page uh, and there's a number of options that we can configure and that will allow us to create a number of different charts. So for example, in this case, we've created a, a pie chart right along the top that you can see. Um, there's uh, different chart types, right? There's horizontal bar charts, vertical bar charts, pie charts, line charts, histogram, and so on. Uh, there's also even one for maps, which is helpful, um, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but basically, um, we configure our, our data by filtering, right? We can filter by date and other columns. Um, and then we provide information on what it is we want to, how we want to visualize this, right? So in this case, we're doing um, a pie chart, a borough uh, pie chart based on borough, um, where we're showing the number of rows as the, the size of each pie wedge. So this is again a pie chart of 311 queries created on um, 321, 2021, broken down by borough. I mentioned maps. Um, assuming we have uh, geographic data, we can create maps using the open data site. Um, uh, just a side note about the mapping, um, Local Law 108 of 2015 requires that every data set um, that contains street address also contains geographic coordinates. Um, so uh, in this case, in the case of 311, for example, we have the address where the incident uh, occurred. Um, and as a result, then, we also have geographic coordinates, specifically latitude and longitude, which we can use for mapping, right? So here um, we've created a, a map um, for 311 incidents from yesterday, right? And we use those coordinates to create that map, right? So you don't need to, to be an expert in mapping. Um, you can use this map um, type uh, to create this map visualization directly in the open data portal. And then um, another chart type, this is a bar chart now. Again, we've just done some filtering. In this case, we filtered um, a specific date range uh, and it's for the agency Department of Transportation with the uh, abbreviation DOT there. And we've created a bar chart using the complaint type as our dimension um, and then the count of rows, right? So we can see for DOT for this time range, uh, the, the biggest complaint type are street conditions, followed by street light conditions, then traffic signals, right? So those are our top three. So there are a number of tools that use open data. Uh, these are created by members of the public. Sometimes they're businesses, sometimes they're advocacy groups. Uh, sometimes there are actually government agencies that leverage. So a good place to start uh, just to see how people are using open data is to go to the Open Data Project Gallery. 
And the link is here, nyc.gov slash open data slash projects. Uh, and this gives us a gallery of projects. Um, so these are all tools that build on New York City open data. They might um, include other data as well, uh, but uh, there is a significant portion is built on the open data um, that's available for your, your uh, public access. And if you're so inclined, you can create uh, your own project and submit it, and it can be featured here as well, right? So uh, just some, you'll note um, some interesting ones here that popped up, right? The one about data, uh, NYC restaurant violations, for example, might be helpful, um, you know, if you're interested in going to a restaurant, right? Seeing what's going on maybe in your neighborhood. There's also a series of maps that use open data. Uh, and if you go to the link here, nyc.gov slash maps, you can see um, a number of tools that are created by city agencies. Um, and these uh, typically are map-based, right? So there's uh, the NYC Vaccine Finder, which was a recent addition during the COVID pandemic. Um, there's also NY City Map, which is sort of a one-stop shop for all different types of geographic information in the city. And then a more specific one, the uh, crime map, which um, maps data from New York City Police Department um, and was developed by another city agency. So these are all um, leveraging open data sets. And uh, again, were built largely by city agencies. So I'm gonna pause here and turn it over to Sujin and she's gonna walk us through how do we answer questions and solve problems with open data. Okay. Thank you, Doug. And let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Great. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, you just learned about the NIC Open Data Azure program. So, like, yeah, how to get started using the NIC Open Data and also how to view the data, filter the roles, and also how to visualize the data set. But now, like, we just like take a step back and think about the reasons why the people would be working with the open data in the first place. So like sometimes it can be really purely like exploratory. So you just want to like play around and then see what's out there and also like what kind of the municipal data is really available in the open data set. But like most but most time people have very specific questions. Like, yeah, so that's why they visit the open data set to answering their questions. And also like, yeah, they, so, and then they know that some of the data is already available in the open data set. So, and so like in the for next, like 15 minutes, uh, like I want to like introduce some framework you can take from today's section. So how like we can use the NIC open data to answer your own question and then solve the problems. And this slide like showing like, yeah, you can see uh, the sequence of the five steps. So, and then we, this is like kind of the framework and then how you like, yeah, define your problems and then using the data and then like have some like helpful answer to make the decisions. So we can go over these five steps for next 10 and 15 minutes. And then, so the first step is to define the problems. So like, yeah, you may have your own like the questions, problems in your mind, but today for like, yeah, the, for today's the section. So like the, I have the one examples of the question, like the problems we can like, yeah, trying to solve together. So let's imagine you are working for the New York City the agency that would like to implement some like the supporting program for the restaurant have some impact by the pandemic. So and then the, the city agency would like to distribute uh, small grants or the loans to like yeah to the restaurant. So you are the person who is in charge like in charge of the developing this program and you want to decide which restaurant should receive this funding or like which neighborhood like you should targeting for these programs. So and then like yeah so that's the our the problem and then we can like yeah trying to solve today 
And then, and then how can you using the NIC open data to support your work? So, and then the, the following step is to identify the list of the data set that can be helpful to answer your question. And also like, yeah, and then also like you need to familiarize yourself with the, that data set. So like, yeah, indeed the first really the step is, so you need to searching the relevant like data set by like using this like search bar as like the go over, like, so you can type in like some key terms. And then, so like, for example, this one showing like, yeah, the business or restaurant. So you type these key terms and then you have this list of the, like the result, you get the result of the data set. So, and I would say like, if you are not familiar with the open data, or if you are not familiar with the city data as much, and then this will require some desk research time. And also like, yeah, to understand, like, yeah, to find the relevant the data set and also to understand each data set. So like identify which data set it can be like really helpful to answer my the problems. But like for today's like, yeah, presentation purpose, like this is the list of the data set that might be like, yeah, helpful for our the questions. And yeah, actually like, yeah, we are not in the rush. So like we can quickly go over to the one of the data set. And out of the, this list, yeah, I want to introduce like one of the data set that is like MWEB, LBE, and the EB, like the business list. So if you are not familiar with the, this acronym, so like the, the New York City has the certification programs for like, yeah, example, like the minority and the woman owned the business enterprise. So like, yeah, so they like city has the decertification program and then trying to like, yeah, promote and then foster the growth of the MWB business in the city, like through the city's the contract. So like, and then this like data set, you can find like all list of the, the businesses who are like, uh, yeah, certified these programs. So you might be thinking like, yeah, this, if you want to like prioritize like the MWB business for your restaurant support program, these data they might be like useful. So if we quickly recap what we learned from the before, it's like, yeah, first checking the like latest update date. So it's the February 7th. So like it's, you can like, I guess like this data is like pretty like, yeah, updated like recently. And then also like, or go over some of the like the columns. And then my main question is like, since I'm only focusing on the restaurant, but this data set is covered all of the businesses. So I'm wondering like, is there any columns like you can like identify the restaurant business quickly? So at that time you can using this either like data dictionary or this list of the columns. So which like columns might be like, yeah, the key columns to identify the list of the types of the businesses, which like, yeah, maybe, yes, we can using like this, like, yeah, business description column. So which, yeah, you can using like, I, my guessing is like, yeah, we can using these columns to identify the restaurant. So, and then let's go back to the, the slide. So this is like, so after like listing up all of the relevant the data set. So, and then the next step is what I just show you. And then, so like you, like the next step is to understanding each data step by using the data dictionary or like overview of the description. So, and then like what this data set is covered and then what columns are available. And then this data set, whether this data set has the, the like, yeah, the columns you are really looking for. So you need to understand like each data set using like the yeah, data dictionaries and then description. And this is like another example there is the data set named like NIC business Acceler acceleration businesses program. And then like you might wondering, like this looks like another existing city program. And then like you're wondering if this program already provide like same kind of the financial support I'm planning. But like, and then you can review the data dictionary and then this description of the data set, you figured like, yeah, it's not, it's not correct. Like this, 
based on the this data dictionary, this program provides in-kind support only. So this may be also useful when you're deciding which restaurant your agency should give the financial support. And then, so like, yeah. And then the, like, while you are really like digging in, in the open data set, like the open data team, like, yeah, you might have the like further like the questions and then like, like why like the all the open data team and then city agency like like trying to their best to fill out all of the information in the data dictionary but still there might be like you have the question so like i highly recommend like if like contact the op nic open data help desk if you like have any like yeah, questions so in the tab navigation you can find this contact us menu so you can find this contact us in the every like pages in the open data. So you can like yeah contact you can contact this help desk with your questions. And then once you identify the data set that are like helpful in like determining which restaurant should be receiving the funding, the the third step is to frame really specific question you can answer with the, this data set. So for example, like yeah. We could ask this following question in the right hand corner from the like, yeah, which restaurant received the grade A inspection rate to the like, which restaurant are like located in the like, yeah, the busy area. So those like, yeah, you have more narrowed down your problem and then like, yeah, have the very specific question. And then like, yeah, let's focus on the first question about the restaurant inspection grade. And then like, yeah, the, if you go to like this, like DOHMH restaurant inspection, the data set, it's the same process. It's always important thing is like, yeah, checking all the like available columns and then what the columns are like represent. So here is the, this is the column name from the DOHMH inspection data set. And then there is the description. So like definitions of the each column. So you can go over this list and then you can identify in the end, there is the grade column. And then this is like, yeah, the grade associated with the inspection. So you can, yeah, you can figure out, I can like, yeah, filtering the restaurants with the grade A or B, like, yeah, based on the, these columns. And, then like, yeah, the finally, like it's time you really crunching the numbers to answer your like specific question and then conduct some analysis like, yeah, by creating some chart or like summary tables to answer your the question. So if we go back to the UHMH, the restaurant inspection, the data. So your question was like, our question was like, which restaurant have received the grade A? the inspection rate in the last year. So what we can do is like, yeah, we can like making quick visualization directly in the open data. So this is the one example of the, like we quickly sim yeah, make creating the bar chart. So this bar chart is showing the number of the restaurant by their like the grade level and then in the Bronx. So, but now here what you, can notice is the first, the bar is like, there are many, many restaurants even doesn't have the great information at all. So like perhaps like this data set is not, maybe like not really useful in helping you determine which restaurant should receive the funding just because the grade column is not robust as you expected. So it's like, yeah, it, it cannot be like, yeah, the fair criteria when you decide the restaurant. So. And that case is I always like going back to the data dictionary again. And then if there are any reasons or justification from the DOHMH, like about these missing values. So if like, yeah, that's the also like important the steps. And then, yes. So after, or like you've conducting analysis, you answering your like specifications. So you should be better informed to make the decisions or provide like stakeholders with the, some like recommendation with the actual the data. So yeah, so this is the framework. I hope you can take from today's section to answer your own questions. 
And then, yeah, so this is really last part of the, our presentation. So how to get involved in the open data community. And this is like, we already go over, like, yeah, if you cannot find any data set in the open data, like, yeah, you can request a data set or, and also have any question you can using this open data help desk. And then, yeah, the Doug already mentioned, like there is the open data project gallery, and then this is really fun. And then many like, yeah, people like already like created like data visualization or application based on the like powered by open data. So you can also submit your own project this, yeah, in the, this program. And yeah, so, and then you are already part of the like open data week. So like, yeah, it's, until this like week. So I hope you, in, yeah, you can join like more events in the rest of the week. And this is really, yeah, our 101 presentation. And then we can, yeah, if you have any questions, we can answer for the next 10 minutes. Uh, Doug, Great job. You're muted. <laughs> Doug, you're muted, like, yeah. So there's Somebody a question in the comment, which is how long does it, usually take to receive a response from the help desk? Yeah, so usually uh, it takes, uh, you know, anywhere from, you know, a day to a couple of weeks. I think uh, the, the time is set to be no more than two weeks. So that's the service level agreement is my understanding that um, questions need to be responded to within two weeks. That doesn't mean that you're gonna get the answer that you need within two weeks. You know, there. You know, your question might be about adding a new data set, which that might take a longer time. But they should respond with it too. For those of you who want to ask questions, uh, remember we're still recording. So if you want to ask anonymous questions, uh, please put them in the chat directly to Zachary, uh, Kate, or Noel, um, and we'll ask them to the hosts. Um, otherwise, you can. Uh, publicly ask them in the chat, or you could come off of mute uh, and ask the question. Um, right now, we have another question in the chat, which is how reliable is the data in uh, on the open data portal? So I think the answer really depends. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this is, the data is used for government operations. So by and large, it's, it's very accurate. Um, there are cases where there's data quality issues. Uh, I know in, in my organization, for example, um, we posted some data and somebody actually noticed uh, an issue with the data, um, which was something that hadn't been noticed before. So, um, you know, it does happen occasionally. There are some data discrepancies or inaccuracies in the data, um, but that's also one of the benefits to, to making this available to the public is that we get more eyes on it, right? And we can, we can approve on it, which is great. Um, you know, one thing that I should mention is that, you know, uh, and I say this a lot, um, you know, while the data is yours, it was, it's for the general public, um, it wasn't created for the general public, right? So it's, it's created for a specific business operation, um, which may or may not meet your specific needs. So that, that needs to be understood as well. You know, there was somebody was joking that um, open data is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. Great. And I also add one more comment in terms of the reliability is like, I would say like the data set is like, yeah, it's pretty like reliable in terms of the data integrity, but like the most of the issue, I also encounter the issue with open data set is some of the data set is like updated like long time ago and then like hasn't been like recently updated. The recent, so it's like the data set is not the reflect the, the, the recent the situation. So that's, so that's why I think it's, it's always important thing is like when is the last update the data set when you like before going into the data set. So like if that like the subject area you are like working on is like have the some like recent changes like and then like that in that case is like the when is the last update date information is really useful and important. So for and then like yeah. If, if the data is not really updated for like for a while, like that might be have some like yeah issues in terms of the reliability. 
And just to add, I know both Doug and Sujin mentioned this, but if you ever notice an error or have a question about open data, please do contact our help desk and either you'll get a response from the open data team or the agency that manages the data. Um, we have an anonymous question here. Um, so can you ask about the data integration, uh, uh, excuse me, um, what is the data integration process between city agencies publishing the data do it and the open data portal team. Um, sometimes the summonses that they issue to Oath and ECB, which are published on the open data, are not showing up correctly or sometimes not available. So I, I could I could answer that one. Um, in, in general, um, especially for larger data sets that are updated frequently, the data is sort of automatically moved from the city's systems that are used for whatever sort of like thing you're looking at, in this case, summonses, to the open data team, and that includes the, the DOIT staff, and then to the open data, public open data site. Um, if you see, again, like there's an issue with the summons or if there's something you're, you're finding missing, um, please do contact, and I'll put a link in the chat our help desk and um, this is a great way. Maybe there is an error, maybe there's something that, um, maybe it's a mistake you made, maybe it's a mistake in the data, but either, either way, we, we will definitely want to hear about it so we can help you. Great, I can keep on reading questions here. Um, so Stacy from Community Board 3 in Staten Island asks, when is the data on the open data portal updated? So um, that really depends on each agency and each data set, right? Every data set has its own frequency. Some data like 311 is updated uh, daily. Other data sets might be updated less frequently. They might be weekly, monthly. Um, we have a couple of data sets that are updated quarterly, for example. Um, some data is even updated uh, annually. So it really depends on the agency and the specific data set. Um, they're, they're all different. Great. Um, so here are some questions that are uh, coming in. Would it be correct to say uh, that the data on the open data portal, each agency on the open data portal is responsible for the validity of the data that it puts onto the open data portal? Um, and yeah, that's it. Would it be correct to say that each agency is responsible for the mm -hmm. data that they put on the open data portal? Yeah, so the short answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, every agency, has again every agency has an open data coordinator um you know and the data goes through various reviews within the, each agency before it gets posted to open data um so like you know zachary said if uh, an issue with accuracy or things like that are, are identified by all means uh, submit um a question to the open to the uh, open data help desk uh and you know the agency will try to rectify it um uh, this question kind of trails off, Kelly. Um, will open data interface in any way with the city's planning, uh, city planning's new racial impact data tool created uh, to measure the impact of, uh, or to, to, to perform impact racial, uh, I don't know how to rephrase this last part. Well, I, uh, let me re reorganize this question in the sense that um, how will open data uh, display information for agency reports or does the open data portal contain data from agency reports? So I can't speak to that specific tool. I'm not familiar with it. Um, but in general, um, most tools that are based on open data will uh, provide the data, right? So it will provide a link to the, the data on the open data site, um, or it might give you the ability to download the data directly from the application. Um, typically that will be made available. Um, but again, I'm not familiar with the specific tool, so I can't really speak to that. Uh, you could, that, that's a good candidate for a question to the help desk. And I think the like, one of the mandate for the older city agency is if you like make if you like publishing any like the public report or like dashboard on your agency website or that num or that the, like the data should be publishing in the open data so i'm also fully know about the scope of the this like the the city planning's like yeah racial impact data too but if this tool is going to be 
public in the city planning's website or like they like created another website with this tool, they must like yeah, publishing the underlying data for that tool in the open data. So that will take some time. Like yeah, they may be like DCP first publishing that tool, but like they also like yeah, after some time, yeah, like some like weeks later, they they must publish in the open data, right, Jacari? Like yeah. Uh, in general, the idea is that mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to go to 20 agency websites to find 20 different data sets. You could find it mm -hmm. all on New York City Open Data. And then once it's available, it sort of has to be kept in sync. So it's not as if you post this tool, uh, this map, for example, on your website that updates once a day and you only update the open data once a month. They have to be in, in its step. Exactly. Thank you all. Um, we are at time. Um, so I want to thank everybody Zachary, do you have anything else that you want to add? Um, I want to thank everybody, uh, especially um, the, the presenters, the Open Data Ambassadors, um, Sujin and Doug, and then um, the Staten Island Borough President's Office. Um, I know Anthony Esposito was, was having issues with his audio earlier, so just wanted to turn it over to him to say some closing words. Yes. Can you hear me this time? Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. So um, just want to say hello, everyone, real quick. My name is Anthony Esposito. I am the Open Data Coordinator for the Staten Island Borough President's Office. Um, so I just want to say thank you to, to everyone, the data analytics, the people that are on the uh, Zoom with us today for joining today on behalf of uh, Borough President Fisella. Um, real quick, the word data is scary. It's, it's, it's not in, uh, people hear that word and they get nervous because it sounds very involved, very scary. But I can tell you that this website is extremely user-friendly. It, 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 you can actually go on there and find yourself getting lost just looking at everything that you could possibly find. And it's, it's kind of empowering because you literally have the city at your fingertips. And, you know, so, so my big takeaway that I think everyone should have today is just go on the website, click around, search for things, and you'll find that there's so much more information out there than we really even know about. And, um, you know, obviously if you have questions, reach out to anybody and they'll be able to help you. But again, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for, for doing the presentation today. And um, thank you for joining. Great. With that, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Open Data Ambassadors. Uh, we love having you in the family. Uh, and thanks, Moda, for being such great collaborators for Open Data Week. And thank you, the Staten Island Borough President team for being here and promoting this. Um, we look forward to hosting many more open data trainings for all community board members and for all residents of all boroughs. So uh, thanks and have a wonderful open data week.